Equilibrium and the solubility product. The solubility product is what we have when insoluble compounds are dissolved in water. K is an equilibrium constant, and we use Ksp when we have the equilibrium constant for an insoluble compound that is being so that it's being dissolved in water. So Ksp, K for your equilibrium constant. SP for the solubility product. Ionic compounds can be soluble or insoluble. When you have soluble ionic compounds, they're classified as strong electrolytes because they dissociate entirely in water, giving you only ions. So an example of a strong electrolyte is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a solid at room temperature. When you add that solid into the water, that ionic bond that it's holding together, the sodium ion and the chloride ion, is going to break apart. Your solid is going to dissolve in water because it's giving you the ions in solution. Now, when you have insoluble ionic compounds, Insoluble ionic compounds are weak electrolytes because they don't dissociate entirely. Okay? They dissociate in a partial way, giving you just a few ions and mostly the solid in solution. For those insoluble ionic compounds, we can actually write down a KSP or the solubility product constant for insoluble ionic compounds. So I have my example here, silver chloride. Silver chloride, it's a weak electrolyte, is classified as an insoluble ionic compound. But when you add silver chloride in water, there's always a formation of ions, but it's a small amount of ions. What you have in solution, it's mostly the silver chloride and just a few ions. So for any insoluble compound, we can write down the solubility product constant because that solid will be in an equilibrium with the ions that are being formed. So you have your solid giving you a few ions in solution but the ions can recombine to give you back the solid. The solid is not dissolving in water because those ions, they have a strong attraction between them. So the ions that can actually dissolve in the water that are forming, that are being formed in the water, they can recombine to give you back the solid because there's a strong attraction between those ions. So whenever you have an insoluble ionic compound, we can write down that as an equilibrium using the double arrow going in the forward direction where the ions are being formed and going also in the reverse direction where the ions are recombining to give you back the solid. So in the picture here, you have the addition of silver chloride in water. So the silver chloride is this part here, and this small molecule here is representing molecules of water. So you see you add the silver chloride in water since it's insoluble. You see how you have on the right side just a few ions that are coming from the actual solid which is this one here so you have just a small amount of ions that are being formed in that solution most of the solid silver chloride remains as a solid so whenever you add an insoluble compound in water right 
you will see the solid going to the bottom of the flask because not all of that solid will dissolve. Now, this not to be confused with a saturated solution or super saturated solution. Those solutions, you can prepare them with soluble ionic compounds. It's just that the ratio solute, the ionic compound and the solvent water, it's um, you don't have enough of that solvent to dissolve all of that solid that you're adding. So that's just saturation of a solution. When you have an insoluble compound, even if you add like a super small amount of that insoluble compound in water, you still see the solid going to the bottom of the container. Now, this is just a review where I have my periodic table, charges, and the polyatomic ions because we're going to be breaking apart the ions to write down the dissociation equation to get the equilibrium constant expression and do some calculations. So let me just review this here. You have the periodic table. You can use the periodic table to assign charge to the ions that you're getting from those elements. Group one through eight for the main groups. So your main groups one, two, and three are positive because you have metals for those. And then groups five, six, and seven, they're forming negative ions because those are non-metals. So ions from elements in group one will have an, a charge of plus one. Ions forming from elements in group two will have a charge that is equal to plus two. You have aluminum with plus three. Then we move to group five, skipping group four. And in group five, you're forming negative ions with charges of minus three. In group six, we have oxygen. Those elements are going to form ions with a charge of minus two. And finally, in group seven in the periodic table, where you have the halogens, those elements are going to form ions with a charge of minus one. So you have a list of polyatomic ions. These are not all the polyatomic ions, but some of them, the ones that we use more often. So before I move to the next thing, I want to write down the KSP expression for my dissociation equation for the silver chloride. So if you look at your dissociation equation for silver chloride here, you have the solid and the solid is giving you the ions in solution. So when you write in your dissociation equation, remember it's the concentration of your product over concentration of the reactant. So my products here are the ion for silver and the chloride ion. Now I'm not writing anything else for that KSP expression because what you have on the reactant side, it's a solid and we don't include solids or liquids in the equilibrium constant expression. KSP is still an equilibrium constant expression. It's just that it's an equilibrium constant expression for an insoluble ionic compound. When we're writing equilibrium constant expressions, right? We have concentrations of the products, concentration of the reactants. Those concentrations are concentrations at equilibrium. Now, when we're looking at these insoluble compounds for KSP, right, those concentrations that we're using in that equilibrium constant are known as molar solubility. This is still molarity because it's the amount of solute in moles that will dissolve in one liter, okay? In one liter of water if they are aqueous solutions. So it's still a molar concentration, but it's called the molar solubility. And we use letter S for those concentrations. Now, before we actually go over molar solubility and KSP and the calculations, let's check how the ions break apart. 
So when you have, um, I have my first compound right there, calcium carbonate, right? Carbonate, it's a polyatomic ion. It's in the list that you have. Polyatomic ions, right? You have non-metals, C and O. Those are non-metals. So your polyatomic ions, those elements are held together by covalent bonds. They don't break apart. Covalent bonds, they're sharing electrons. So they don't break apart when they're dissolving. So whenever you have a polyatomic ion, the polyatomic ion will break apart from the other ion, but it will remain as a whole unit. So you see how I'm writing down my carbonate here. CO3 charge of minus 2 because that's the charge for carbonate. I'm not breaking apart the carbon and the oxygens because they are formed by covalent bonds and we don't separate those. We can break apart ionic bonds giving you the positive and negative ions but the polyatomic ions they are a whole unit. So on the second example right there we have sulfate another polyatomic ion. So sulfate remains together as a whole unit. Now Na2 Na2, it's two ions of sodium. There's no such thing as Na2. Na is sodium. Na plus one is the ion of sodium. If you have sulfate with a charge of minus two, and that sulfate is combined with sodium, To cancel out two negative charges, you need two positive charges. Each sodium ion, sodium in group one in the periodic table, it forms ions with a charge of plus one. So each sodium has a charge of plus one. And to cancel two negative charges, you need two ions of sodium. The third one in the list, it's aluminum hydroxide. Hydroxide, it's another polyatomic ion with a charge of minus one. So your hydroxide right there. Now you have hydroxide in brackets and that means that you have three hydroxide ions. Aluminum, it's in group three in the periodic table. Ions from elements that are in group three will have a charge equal to plus three. So aluminum has a charge of plus three. So those are the ions that you're getting from those compounds that I have listed there. Aluminum plus three, three positive charges. To cancel out those three positive charges, if you're combining aluminum with hydroxide, since hydroxide has a charge of a negative one, you need three negative charges to cancel out the three positive charges from aluminum. Now, on the second half of this page here, out of the three that I have listed, A, B, and C, I'm writing down only A and C. I'm skipping B and there's a reason. In this part, I'm trying to write down the dissociation equation to get the ions, which we already have, and use that to write down the KSB expression. You can write down KSB expressions for insoluble compounds. For soluble compounds, there's no equilibrium. So we don't have an actual equilibrium constant because there's no equilibrium when something is soluble.
So the second compound here, it's a soluble compound. We use solubility rules to determine which compounds are soluble and which ones are not. Well, there's one rule, which is the first one, that says that any ionic compound containing elements from group 1 containing nitrates or acetate or ammonium, they're always soluble. Since the second compound listed there has sodium, which is in group 1, that compound will be soluble. So we cannot write down a dissociation equation with an equilibrium because there's no such thing as an equilibrium for soluble compounds. The equilibrium happens only when you have the insoluble compounds. So I'm going to write down my dissociation equation for the first one, which is just forming the same ions that we already wrote down. Calcium plus 2 plus carbon minus 2. So KSP is concentration of the products over concentration of the reactant, but that's a solid, so we don't include that. Whenever you're forming ions, the ions are being formed because that solid is dissolved in water. So the ions are aqueous. For the second one, we have aluminum plus three plus three hydroxides. The KSP, it's concentration of aluminum plus three hydroxide. So let's use some information to find out how much is the concentration of the ions that we have in solution. So I have my first example. We're calculating the molar solubility, remember, which is the amount of solute or amount of ions in moles in every liter of this solution. So you have iron carbonate. And we're calculating this molar solubility in pure water. That's an important part of the problem. I have two examples here. One is in pure water and the second one is in a solution. And there's a difference between these two calculations. So to start the problem, we need to write down the equilibrium equation for the dissociation of iron carbonate. Carbonate, polyatomic ion carbonate has a charge of minus two. For iron, you have iron carbonate, right? The charge of iron, it's a transition metal. We cannot find out that charge from the periodic table. We can determine the charge for iron looking at the ion that is bonded to it. So you have carbonate with a charge of minus two. To cancel out two negative charges, you need two positive charges which means that your iron ion has a charge of plus two. Plus two for iron, minus two for carbonate. When your ions combine in a ratio of one to one, the charges are going to cancel out. So I have my dissociation equation and remember your ions are aqueous. So my KSP, Concentration of iron times concentration of carbonate. So to find out the molar solubility, solubility, which is concentration, we can use that equation. 
but you will need concentrations at equilibrium. So let's check something. We need to use an I stable. Since this solid is not part of the equilibrium constant expression, I'm going to cross out all of that. There's no information that we need to put there because none of that information is going to affect the KSP. Now, formation of your ions. The ions that you're getting in solution are coming from the dissociation of the iron carbonate. In the beginning, this is pure water. You don't have anything in pure water. So the initial concentration for the ions should be zero. Now, when your iron carbonate starts dissociating, which is the change, now you're starting to get ions in solution from the dissolution of that iron carbonate. How many ions? We don't know. It's a number, it's an amount, but we don't know how much. So I'm going to use a letter. Now, for all of the problems that we have done for equilibrium, we were using letter X. So my reactant is decreasing by X amount. The products are increasing by X amount. But now, since we're calculating molar solubility, we are going to change that letter X for an S. So you see, when the iron carbonate starts dissociating, giving you ions in solution, they're being formed. How much? We don't know. I'm using letter S. So for carbonate, it's the same thing. The coefficient for your ions is one for both of them. So forming, that's positive, S. So in equilibrium, this is 0 plus S, which is just S. Same thing for carbonate, 0 plus S, which is just S. So now you have concentration at equilibrium, which is what you need to plug in right there. KSP value, it's given. 3.07 times 10 to the minus 11. That will be S squared. So we're trying to find out molar solubility, which is S. So if we solve this here to get S, this is the value of S squared. So we do square root on both sides. That will give you the value of that molar solubility for iron carbonate in pure water. That's 5.54. times 10 to the minus 6. Second problem. We are still looking at the dissociation of iron carbonate, but now we're looking at the dissociation of iron carbonate in an actual solution. This is not just in water. If you have just water, like the first one, right? You're adding your iron carbonate in the water. Most of that compound remains as a solid. So
some of it will give you the ions iron plus two carbonate now in this problem we're actually adding the iron carbonate into a solution containing iron chloride which means that you already have in this solution ions of iron you have iron ions of chloride too in that solution okay let's see that let's say that the chloride ions are these blue dots yeah? so you do have the chloride ions in there but you will see that the chloride ion is not making any difference because it's not part of your compound. The iron that you have in that solution will make a difference in the solubility of your iron carbonate because you do have iron as part of the ions that are being formed from the iron carbonate. So, the first example is just pure water. All of the ions that are going to be in that solution are coming from the dissociation of your iron carbonate. Now, in the second example, you already have ions of iron in your solution. So to that amount that you already have, you're adding the ions that are coming from the dissociation of your iron carbonate so i'm going to write down the dissociation equation because we need to prepare the ice table now that's crossed out because that's a solid right and where KSP is the same. As the previous example. Now what is going to be different. See. In the problem where we have pure water. In pure water. Your initial concentrations for the ions they are equal to zero because you don't have any ions in water, right? The ions are being formed. But in this example here, you are at you, the iron carbonate is being added into this solution that already has some ions in there. How many ions you have or how much? Your solution is 0 0.150 molar iron chloride. So when that iron chloride dissociates in the solution to give you what you have in that beaker, you're getting the ions for iron, the ions for chloride. But you see in your equilibrium here, you have iron carbonate we don't have any chloride how much iron you have 0 0.150 that it's already in the in the solution and on top of that you're adding the iron carbonate the carbonate is not part of the solution, you see, because you have only iron chloride. So the initial concentration for the carbonate is zero. Now let's see the change. The change, your concentration for iron, it's increasing because you're getting iron from the dissociation of your iron chloride right here. So we're adding some iron in here how much we don't know that would be s now for the carbonate same thing that's it's that one is being formed we don't know so we're using letter s 
So at equilibrium, we have for iron 0 0.150 plus S, and for carbonate, it's 0 plus S, so we, we have just S. So now we have a concentration at equilibrium for iron, that one. We have concentration at equilibrium for your carbonate. We know how much is Ksp. We can solve for the value of S, the molar solubility. But there's a simplification that we can do to solve this problem in, a, in an easier way. You see the value of your equilibrium constant right here. 10 to the minus 11. 10 to the minus 11, it's a super small number. You have 10 zeros in front of that three, which is your first digit in the scientific notation. In a regular notation, you will have 10 zeros in front of that three. So that's a very small number. What that tells you is that you're actually getting such a small amount of ions in solution because this compound is very insoluble. The smaller the value of Ksp, the more insoluble a compound is. So 10 to the minus 11. A small number, you're getting just a small amount of ions coming from the dissolution of that iron carbonate. So we can actually assume that this concentration here, the initial concentration of iron that you have in your solution from the iron chloride that it's in your solution, right? That concentration would change by such a small amount because the amount of ions that is being formed is so small that we can assume that at equilibrium your concentration at equilibrium for the ion will be equal to your initial concentration so we can cross out that s that it's coming from the dissociation of your iron carbonate. That will simplify the math because now you will get 3.07 times 10 to the minus 11. That's equal to the concentration for the iron will be 0 0.150. For the carbonate will be S. And now we can solve for S just dividing on both sides by So the molar solubility is 2.05 something close to this number times 10 to the minus 10 a very small number so we can compare our numbers in pure water you have 5.54 times 10 to the minus 6 when you have a common ion because you're starting with a solution that has one of the ions that it's being formed from the dissolution of that ionic compound you have a common ion in this example the common ion is iron you have iron in your solution from your iron chloride now to that iron that you have in solution you're adding some more ions coming from the dissolution of the iron carbonate. So you do have a common ion present. So when we compare the solubility, molar solubility for your compound in pure water, molar solubility for the compound in a solution containing 
a common ion you can see that in pure water the solubility is bigger than the solubility that we're calculating for a solution containing a common ion and that is always true this is an equilibrium if you're adding more of this one right which is what's happening because that's your common ion increasing concentration of something on the product side will shift the equilibrium towards the reactant side which is where you have the solid so what that means is that a common ion decreases the solubility of an insoluble ionic compound So here you have two examples, the same thing that we did. In the first one, you're calculating molar solubility for lead chloride in pure water. In the second example, you're calculating molar solubility for lead chloride, but now you have a solution containing 0.075 molar for sodium chloride. So you do have a common ion for this one, which is the chloride. You have the answers there so you can do your calculation and check your final numbers. But you can see that for the second one where I have the common ion, you have a smaller number that the solubility that it's being calculated for the first example.